Hi guys, so I wanted to make a video here again for you tonight about um, example 8 and 9 in our note sheet that we didn't quite get to. I realized this is example 8 twice, but this is actually example 9. Um, and so I just wanted to go over how binomial expansions work. Uh, we looked earlier at um, the last example we did in class was Pascal's triangle and how Pascal's triangle gives us the coefficients or com uh, the combinations that we can use to find the coefficients of the binomial expansion. And so uh, if I write out Pascal's triangle like this, we said these indicate the row numbers. And then if I'm in the fifth row, like at the bottom here, this gives me 5 choose 0 and this is 5 choose 1 all the way up to 5 choose 5. So I can quickly get uh, combinations from Pascal's triangle and that's very useful for our binomial expansion theorem. So the binomial expansion theorem is here. Uh, the binomial theorem as we call it and it says uh, if I have a plus b to the n this is how the expansion works. I won't read all that out for you but uh, if you look at this carefully, you can see there's a clear pattern what that emerges. Um, we always have uh, n choose 0, this is where we start. So always the uh, first combination we choose also goes with the power of the second term. Uh, so you can see n choose 1 goes with b to the 1, n choose 2 goes with b to the second. All right. uh, that's helpful. And also, in general, you can see what happens is that the powers of n in, uh, decrease by 1 in every term of the binomial expansion and the powers of b decrease uh, increase okay so the powers of a decrease and the powers of b increase <coughs> as you write out the binomial expansion so what i'm going to do is uh, i think it's hard to visualize how this works just by looking at the formula itself I'll do uh, some examples with you and I'll show you two different ways you can actually solve these type of questions. So uh, let's look at letter A together and um, I'll try and keep this in view here so you can see the uh, binomial expansion there. Um, so what we'll do is go ahead and write this out and it's good to identify A, B and N in your expression. So for us, uh, a here is x squared, b is y, and n is 3. All right, those are the components of our uh, binomial to a power. And so if you want to start filling this out, it always starts, as you can see in the formula up here, with uh, n choose 0. So our n is 3 in this case. So we start with 3 choose 0, and then we write uh, a to the nth power. So for us, this is multiplication. a is x squared, and we write it to the nth power, which is 3 in this case, times, and then b to the 0th power. Our b is y, y to the 0th power. Okay, so that's the first term in our expansion. Uh, and then plus, plus, and now we just go down and adjust. We keep every set of parentheses the same. We just adjust their exponents. So we had 3 choose 0. Now it's 3 choose 1. Uh, we have the same x squared, but the power goes down to 2 uh, times y, but now y's power increases to 1. Okay? And then plus 3 choose 2 and x squared. But x squared's power now decreases to 1 and y's power increases to 2. And the last term in the expansion is 3 choose 3. Uh, the x squared power this time is 0. And the y's power now increased all the way to 3. So you can see that follows our pattern up here uh, that shows. I go from n down to 0 for the first term. So we went from 3 down to 0. 
And then for the second term, I go from 0 up to n. And we went from 0 over here all the way to 3. So we followed the pattern. And uh, I think writing the combinations part is fairly simple. You just start n choose 0 all the way up to n choose n. OK? Uh, and now the reason that we actually made you uh, figure out how to write the Pascal's triangle is because that's really useful in finding these coefficients. If you have to find these coefficients on my calculator, that's fairly tedious. So uh, what you can do is use Pascal's triangle to find those. And so I'm going to write out a whole bunch of uh, rows of Pascal's triangle because it will help us with this whole example. All right. So just to recap the, how that worked, it was 1, 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. So each number is the sum of the two numbers above it, uh, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So this is the fourth row. Remember, this diagonal here gives us the rows, the row numbers, uh, and then 1, 5, 10, uh, sorry, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, uh, and then 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1, and you can go on and on. I think that's enough. We only need to go up to the fifth row, I think, in our example, so I'll stop there. We went all the way to the sixth row, okay? And so now from here, I can look at the nth row, this row, to find all my uh, combinations from Pascal's triangle, right? So if we do that in the nth row, here's the nth row, the third row, okay? Uh, what this is giving me is that this is 3 choose 0, and the second term is 3 choose 1, this is 3 choose 2, and this is 3 choose 3, OK? So these four numbers are my four combinations that I need for my binomial expansion. So if we do that, let me fill those in here. If we do that, what I have here is 3 choose 0 is 1, OK? And 3 choose 1 is 3 from here. So I have 1, I have 3. And then here I have 3, and then here I have 1, OK? So all coming from the third row of the Pascal's triangle. Uh, and now you can just simplify the rest of this uh, to clean it up. Obviously, we can't leave the answer like this. You want to give a fully simplified binomial expansion. So you can just continue multiplying and uh, simplify this as much as you can. So this is x to the second power to the third power. Well, that's 2 times 3 x to the sixth power. And then y to the 0 power is just 1. Plus, uh, this would be x times x to the fourth power, 2 to the second, times y to the first power. Plus, again, this would be x times x to the second power times y to the second power, bring the plus down. And lastly, I have x squared to the 0, which is actually just 1, and then y to the third power. All right? So this is equals, this is equals. And all we have to do then is just write it in a nice, clean, simplified fashion. All right? So what we have here is 1 times x to the 6 times 1, which is just x to the 6th. Then I have x to the 4th times y to the 1st times 3. That's just exactly what it says. And then I have 3x squared y squared. And then I have 1 times 1 times y cubed. That's just y cubed. All right? So that's, that's one way to do this. There are other ways, which I'll show you in a second. But that's one way to do this. Uh, the thing is, this is an easy example because this is a plus. That makes things easy. And also because there are no numbers in front of these two terms. 
So if there were numbers here, other than just a coefficient of 1 with the x and the y, then this becomes uh, significantly more complicated. So uh, let's try one of those with a minus and a number in front of one of the uh, uh, variables, and you'll see that that's a little bit more tricky. It's still not unbearable, but it's a little bit more tricky. Okay, so let's try letter C. Uh, this again, let's identify our A, which is five, and this whole term here is our B, and this is our N. Okay, so at least there's only three. Uh, a power, a third power, so it's not too many terms we have to write out. Um, but unfortunately, there's a minus and a two here that complicates things. So I'll show you how that works. So again, we can look at our binomial expansion formula, and it starts with n choose zero, n choose one. So maybe that'll be the easiest thing to do. <clears throat> Take that your q from there. Just do uh, three choose zero, all right, and then uh, times my a term, which is 5, to the nth power, which is 3, and then times uh, negative 2y to the 0th power. Remember that I said earlier, this is going to come in a little bit handy in the next example. These two always go together. Okay, Those two powers match each other all the time. So the back term, or the b term, uh, the first power of the B term and 3 choose 0 go together, or 3 choose 1 will be the first power of the B term. Okay, And so then we do plus, uh, let me switch back here, and then 3 choose 1. Now we have times 5 to the second power, decrease that by 1. Then we have negative 2y to the first power, plus 3 choose 2 times... 5 to the first power that decreases by 1 again times negative 2y to the second power that increases by 1. And then last term th plus 3 choose 3 and times this time 5 to the 0 power and then negative 2y to the third power. So again I went 3 choose one, 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2. So this pattern holds and you can just follow the rest of the terms from that. I think it's fairly simple at that point to see what's happening. After you do it a few times, it's not too difficult. Now, what does get tricky is the, are the signs. So let's look at this carefully here. And again, where do I get these numbers from? The 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1. Well, I can go look at my Pascal's triangle. And again, I can look at the third row. So I still have it written there. So 3 choose 0 is 1, 3 choose uh, 1 is 3, 3 choose 2 is 3, and 3 choose 3 is 1. So basically I have these same coefficients from the top here. So it's 1, this is a 3, this is a 3, and this is a 1. All right, and now let's just multiply our terms. So 5 to the third is 125 times a negative 2y to the 0 is 1. All right, so that's fine, and then now things get tricky. So I wrote plus here, but uh, now we're going to see something actually different. What happens here is because there's a minus to the first power, actually that's going to change my sign. So this won't be a, mi a plus, this will actually turn into a minus. So this is 3, this is times 5 squared, which is 25. This is negative 2 to the first power, so actually this will change to a negative times 2 and then y to the first power is just y. Okay, And then look at the sign again. So since there's a negative in play here, we have to be a bit careful. But this is negative 2 squared. So the sign actually is going to be positive. There's no other change there. So that's a positive. And then 5 to the first is 5. And then 2 squared is 4. y squared is y squared. Okay, And then again, look at the sign. This is negative 2 to the third power. That means it will actually be, be, stay negative. So this will actually be a negative sign because it's a negative times a positive. Um, and then 5 to the 0 is still 1. And then 2 to the third is 8 times y cubed. All right. 
and then again we've done all the hard work now actually we've done the hard work after the first step the rest of it's just basically cleanup and so we're just going to write this in a nice uh, simplified way so you get 125 minus and if you do this calculation 3 times 25 times 2 75 times 2 150y uh, plus and then that's 15 times 4 60y squared uh, and then this is minus uh, 8y cubed okay and if you want to write this uh, in standard form descending order you would rearrange all the terms so that you start with uh, negative 8y cubed uh, I'll go ahead and do that I don't think that's too crucial for this exercise but uh, this would be standard form all right all right so that's one way you can approach these questions uh, when you have to expand a binomial raised to a power all right um, so there is another way I'll show you the other way I actually I prefer this way I just showed you but there's another technique you can use to do this uh, I'm gonna go and erase some of these terms so I can make some more space here for myself but um, so this was shown to me by a student I think it was last year and uh, you know I think it's okay it's another way of approaching this maybe it'll help you get some uh, more insight into how this works and so the way this works uh, the, the the second technique to solve these questions is by basically uh, making columns and arranging your binomial expansion terms in columns and sometimes I think that might help you see things a bit easier so how this works is this you still start with uh, your combination expansion so five so uh, sorry let me back up again this is a this is B and this is n right so we're still gonna do uh, n choose 0, n choose 1, n choose 2 until we're at n choose n. All those same kind of things, but you just write it out slightly differently. So this is, uh, we start like this, 5 choose 0, and then uh, 5 choose 1, and then 5 choose 2, and then 5 choose 3, 5 choose 4, and then 5 choose 5. You can see we're going to have many more terms in this expansion because the power is bigger. Okay, and then the second part of this technique is take your A term, uh, write it down, and then do all the powers of the A term. Now the A term powers decrease, so you just do uh, x to the fifth power, x to the fourth power, x to the third power, x to the second power, x to the first, x to the zero. And then you do all your B terms and B terms start from 0 and go all the way up to n, in this case 5. So you'll start with B to the 0, B to the 1. Oh, sorry, forgive me, not B. Not B. That's 3 to the 0, uh, 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 4th, and then 3 to the 5th. Now that's actually exactly the same as the previous thing, but it just looks a bit different. You get a bit more of a pattern feel to it and so that might be easier for you all right and of course you can't leave the answer like this you still have to go and now write everything out it might be helpful if you write next to your combinations what each of them are how do I know what those are I go back here but now I go to the fifth row so let's do that here's the fifth row okay and remember the first one gives me uh, five to zero and the last term here is uh, 5 choose 5, right? So 5 choose 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And so those are my coefficients, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And so I can actually go fill those in here. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. And now I'm just going to start listing the uh, terms underneath each of these columns that we've created. All right? And you can do this as fast as slow as you want. That's really up to you. Uh, I think the purpose of this is to try and do this a little bit quicker so you're not feeling like you're writing out too much stuff. So um, 
I'll try and do this all at once and just have the answer at the at the bottom. Okay, and so how this works is you'll do one times three to the zero, which is just one times x to the fifth. Well, that's just x to the fifth. One times x to the fifth plus. Then we have 5 times 3 to the 1, that's 15, and then times x to the 4th. So all of these things just get multiplied by each other. You multiply, it's like multiplying down, actually. All right? um, and then plus 10 times 3 to the 2nd, well, 3 to the 2nd is 9 times 10 is 90, x cubed, plus 10 times 3 to the 3rd, well, 3 to the 3rd is two, uh, 27, so this will be 270 x squared plus, and then 5 times 3 to the fourth. Uh, that comes out to be 405. That's pretty big. Uh, x to the first power plus 1 times x to the 0 is 1 times 3 to the fifth. 3 to the fifth is 243. Okay? So this is the answer to the binomial expansion question, right? Right there. That's the answer. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know which one of those you like. Uh, I think once you start throwing in negatives here, this also gets quite complicated. Um, I'll let you decide. I think those are enough examples done together. I'll let you decide which one you want to use to solve these type of questions. Uh, obviously, in the end, just make sure that you are able to write a very a simplified, neat answer for the whole uh, question. Okay. Okay, guys, so let's look at the last example. It says find the coefficient of x cubed uh, in the expansion of 2x plus 5 to the 8th. <clears throat> I think the strategy to use here is maybe just to take, uh, again, look at a, b, and n. These are my terms. And then maybe just try and figure out uh, how many terms does it take to get to x cubed. All right? for my a term. So remember the a term works that it starts in the binomial expansion like this, 2x to the eighth. The a term starts with the nth power. And then the b term has the power zero. And the nice thing to note is that these powers always add up to give you n. So eight plus zero in the next uh, term of the expansion it's 2x to the 7, and this would be 5 to the 1st. Again, they add up to give you 8. And so if you just list out the uh, powers of the a term, I think you could pretty much easily come up with the answer to the question. Okay, so let's do that. Let's just list out 2x to the 6, 2x to the 5. Just decrease the power here to the 4, 2x to the 3rd. Okay, so this tells me that this would be where x is to the third power. That's the term where x would be the third power. And so now I can actually just write down the power of the b term, which is 5. So if these two powers must add to give me 8, then this is a five, fifth power. Okay, And then also the coefficients, you know how they work. It's 8 choose 0, 8 choose 1. And you can just count it down. This would be 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So this would be 8 choose 5. And I said earlier to you, it's always useful to know that uh, this number and the power of the b term are always the same. So you know that you're doing the right thing. So basically, when they ask for the coefficient, the way to answer this is basically just to ignore the x here, but to solve the numeric part. Okay. So basically, what we're saying is we're looking for this 8 choose 5 times 2 to the third we can ignore the x because they're just looking for the coefficient times 5 to the 5 <clears throat> and if you punch that all in your calculator you get 56 times 8 times 3 1 2 5 and this just shows you how massive these coefficients can get very quickly okay uh, 1,400,000. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of strategy there. Um, I can give you a formula. There's no real formula given in the textbook, but I can give you a formula that I came up with. Um, 
I don't really think you should have to memorize a formula, but if you want something like that to answer questions like this, if you just think of this as x to the k, right? So find the coefficient of x to the k. The way you do that is this way. You say n choose n minus k times a to the k times b to the n minus k. All right? And if you plug that in, you'll come up with that same uh, term we came up with there. Uh, we can try that. This is 8 choose 8 minus 3 if x to the third was the question, right? Times uh, the a term, which is 2x to the k, which is 3, and times b to the n minus k, which is 8 minus 3. And you'll see that that quickly gets you back to 8 choose 5 times 2x to the third times, uh, sorry, I wrote b. This should have been, uh, this should have been 5, 5 to the 5, right? Which that's what we had up there, okay? So if you really want a formula, there's a formula for this type of question, but I don't think that's necessary. I think you could figure it out. All right, thanks, guys.